We are also following a major hearing in Trump's Mar-a-Lago classified documents case. And again, I know it's tough to keep all of these straight, but remember, this is the case where Donald Trump stands accused of taking highly sensitive classified documents to Mar-a-Lago after leaving the White House, after which the National Archives repeatedly asked Trump to return the documents, requests he ignored, and Trump continued to distort the documents in unsecured locations throughout the Mar-a-Lago property, including these famous photos you've seen of the boxes being stored rather insecurely in bathrooms and ballrooms and more. Today's big development, Trump's attorneys asked the judge to delay that case or even throw it out altogether. Trump's team arguing two things. One, that the Presidential Records Act was not clear enough, so Trump did not know he was breaking the law when he brought the documents to Mar-a-Lago. Two, arguing that these were his personal records he had a right to keep. Special Counsel Jack Smith's team fighting back, saying, come on, Trump clearly knew the importance of some of the classified documents he had, pointing to a meeting Trump had at his Bedminster, New Jersey club in 2021. There's a recording of this meeting. In it, he described certain documents as classified, and he did not seem to think that they were personal. Now, that's one and two. Now we turn to three. We are also awaiting a major ruling that could come at any moment in Fulton County, Georgia. This has to do with the case against Donald Trump for trying to steal the Georgia electoral votes. Judge Scott McAfee is any minute set to decide whether District Attorney Fannie Willis, who's prosecuting Trump, should be removed from overseeing Trump's Georgia elections case. This is over claims from the Trump team that Fannie Willis financially benefited from a relationship she had with one of her top prosecutors. All right. Got it all. Let's start with CNN's Caitlin Polance outside the courthouse in Fort Pierce, Florida. That's where the classified documents case is. Caitlin, Judge Cannon seemed pretty skeptical of the Trump team's arguments today. She did, Jake. And what the Trump team is trying to do here in Florida in this federal case about classified records is the same thing they're trying to do everywhere else. They're either trying to get the case dismissed or to make things take a really long time until everyone's set to go to trial. Today, they spent five hours in the courtroom in arguments before Judge Cannon where she didn't rule, but she did express some skepticism to these arguments Trump is making to have his case dismissed on the grounds that these were his purpose, personal papers that he wanted to take out of the White House and that the law around national defense secrets is a little too vague for him to have known he shouldn't have taken them out of the White House and to Mar-a-Lago. Judge Cannon said it would be an extraordinary step for her to, to dismiss the case on these grounds and it would be difficult to see her doing that at this juncture but he's asked by my count nine different ways to have this case dismissed this was arguments for just two of those nine topics or approaches his team has made so we now wait for Judge Cannon to rule, she is very likely to write something potentially lengthy about the Presidential Records Act, about the law in this case, and how it is charged against Donald Trump. She says it'll be coming promptly, but we still don't even have a trial date. The last time we, was, we were here two weeks ago, that was what they were talking about then, and still nothing on the books. So I'm, a, I'm becoming a connoisseur of these Donald Trump courtroom sketches. Uh, if, if we can put the one up of him glowering, looking toward there, uh, that's it. It's good. Um, it's, a pre, it's a pretty good one. I like the shading. It's not cartoony. It kind of captures him. He was inside the courtroom today. We see these images. What was his behavior like? Well, Jake, the glowering Donald Trump that you saw in the arraignments, that type of criminal defendant and that posture of the former president, that's not what he is like now. He's been in Judge Cannon's courtroom for hours at a time. And so you can tell that he is getting much more comfortable sitting there at the defense table. From our producers and reporters inside the court who were able to watch every moment of this, he spent some time chatting with his attorney. He had reactions to some of the arguments that people were making, you know, little facial expressions, things like that. One thing in this case that is really interesting to watch is what people refer to Trump in the courtroom. There's not any interaction with him directly in a day like this where it's about legal arguments. And so Judge Cannon throughout the day was referring to him as the defendant, whereas his own lawyers are referring to him as the president. All right, Caitlin Polance in Florida, thanks so much. With us now, CNN Chief Legal Affairs Correspondent Paula Reed and CNN Senior Legal Analyst 
Ellie Honig, and former Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General Tom Dupree. Thanks to one and all for being here. And uh, let's start, I think, with Judge Cannon, right? That yeah. seemed the most interesting. What do you think she is thinking when it comes to possibly throwing out this case? It's pretty clear that she's not going to throw out this case. But we knew that before today's hearing because this argument that this should be thrown out, it's undercut by former President Trump's own statements. Remember, he's had this evolving explanation for how he should be allowed to have these classified documents. He had a standing order. He declassified them with his mind. He's also on tape, a central piece of evidence in this case, acknowledging that he couldn't declassify them when he was no longer president and he shouldn't have them. He knew he had secrets. But even though he's unlikely to win on the merits, the fact that she allowed arguments here took a whole day to hear this out, when she could have just you know, dispensed with this on paper, that is significant because every day, Every filing, every motion helps delay this. And we know that is the crux, we said it a hundred times, of the Trump defense strategy. So she may hand him a loss in this battle, but in some ways she's helping him win the war. So there was an argument, Tom, that's kind of like the, the unfrozen caveman lawyer argument, which is just <laughs> like, I'm just a humble, you know, caveman. I don't understand your Presidential Records Act, right? I mean, like, he, he, he was so confused, it's written so vaguely. Is there anything to that? In, in my opinion, no, Jake. Look, the fact is, is that this law and the other law, the Espionage Act that is charged under, have been on the book for a long time. And although it's not impossible for a federal judge to basically invalidate a statute on the theory that it is too vague to be enforced, that happens very, very rarely. I cannot imagine her doing that here, particularly because the president, I mean, look, he's not a lawyer, but he's a sophisticated person. And he worked in the White House, obviously. He's well aware of the ways of the federal government. And I just don't think it's going to be plausible to the judge for him to say, I had no idea that what I was doing could possibly be deemed illegal. Now, an interesting moment today, uh, Ellie. Trump's team today argued that Robert Hur, the special counsel who investigated Joe Biden's mishandling of classified information, that that report helps them. Uh, how so and do you buy it? Yeah, so let me translate this over into the legal world. I'm not buying the argument. Let me just okay. say it right up front. Um, the argument is something called selective prosecution, where a defendant can raise a defense. It's very, very rare to succeed on this. I would say nationwide the success rate is close to zero on this. But if you can show somebody else did essentially the same thing I did, that person was not prosecuted, and I am being prosecuted, and it's for a bad reason, you can get a case thrown out. And Donald Trump's lawyers, of course, are saying, well, look at the her report. Both guys knowingly, to some extent, retain classified documents. Biden's not charged. I am charged, hence selective prosecution. But the response from prosecutors, and I think the better argument is, there are very big differences here. This is not s similar enough to warrant dismissal, starting with the fact that Trump obstructed, Biden mostly cooperated, different quantities of documents, different conduct overall. So I think the judge is going to reject that argument. But I will say the her report does give Trump's team some basis to make that argument. I don't think it'll succeed. Though. Although we should note also that the her report for all the hand-wringing Democrats are doing about yeah. how he describes Biden as aged, et cetera, there's also a whole section where he talks about what Trump did is so much worse, and here's why. It's almost as if Robert Hur was anticipating that <laughs> argument, I mean, against... Almost as if. <laughs> right, right. Almost as but, if. Yeah. So let's talk about the decision we just heard, this bombshell uh, uh, filing in the Manhattan DA hush money case against Trump. This is about Trump hiding payments to Stormy Daniels to hide their alleged affair before the election of 2016. The trial was set to start in two weeks. We all you know, scheduled our spring breaks around it. Yes. Uh, and now the district attorney is open to a delay? Yeah, so the defense had asked for a 90-day delay to go through some discovery. And the surprise was that the prosecutor said they wouldn't be opposed to a 30-day delay. Now it'll be up to the judge. So this judge could come back and say 30 days, 45 days. Hell, we'll give you 90 days. But what's astonishing to me, Jake, is this is the one case that was on the calendar. The other three criminal prosecutions are in limbo. And even if he delays it 45 days, let's say, there's nothing that would require me to say, absolutely, this will go. You can always come back and delay it again. Every week, every filing, every little delay makes it possible. This may not go before the election. So this was a real shocker. So I said the other day uh, that a lot of legal experts consider this the weakest of the prosecutions, and I think some people in the DA Bragg's office uh, objected to that. <laughs> what, what, what's your take on this decision, and what's your take on how strong a case this is? So it definitely is the least serious conduct of the four. I mean, two of the other ones relate to the effort to steal the 2020 election, and the third relates to classified documents. So I don't think there's any question this is the least serious. That said, it's still a serious allegation. It might be the only one 
that could realistically go to trial before the election. And it is a virtual certainty now, now that both parties, when the defendant says, we need 90 more days, and the prosecutors even say, we agree at least 30, it's going to get moved at least 30 days. And then it's all sort of a slippery slope downhill. I mean, it gets moved 30. Think about it like when, if you have an air, a, a flight on an airline. It gets delayed 20 minutes, mm -hmm. then it gets delayed another 45 oh, minutes, boy. right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know mean, the all, feeling. We've right. all been there, right? You start calling other airlines. Exactly, <laughs> and it's incremental, and it's not all at once. It just slides, and it slides again, and it slides again, and next thing you know, it's, it's a four-hour delay. I, it feels like we're going down that path, even with this Manhattan DA case, which seemed like the most likely. All right, so District Attorney Bragg, I, I hope that that was a better answer than my... Uh, Y'all are both going to get texts. Uh, we're both going to get We're both going to get them? Well, yeah. I, I, like, either way, uh, I'm not a lawyer, uh, Ellie is. <laughs> What, what do you make of the sliding of this case? I mean, this was the one that was supposed to go to trial before the election. It was, but the fact that it's getting bumped doesn't surprise me at all. Trial dates are notoriously fluid. That's true for civil cases. That's true for criminal prosecutions. And it doesn't surprise me, especially just given the gravity of what's at stake here. I mean, for goodness sake, a former president of the United States is going on trial. And I think both the prosecutors and the judge are going to take the extra step, go the extra mile to ensure that he has ample time to prepare his defense. That's what caused the delay today. The prosecutors acknowledge that the former president had gotten more documents and they wanted to play it safe. They didn't want to create the possibility of reversible error on appeal. So they agreed to give the former president sufficient time to look at these new documents and formulate his defense. So I, I do think it's surprising, but in the grand scheme of things, this does happen pretty often.